Let's bring in Dan Riskin, CTV science and technology expert. Uh, Dan, good to see you. Uh, so a spectacular display last night. How does this phenomenon work and how rare is it? Well, I mean, this is the biggest one since 2003. This is a G5. We have not had a G5 since 2003. So the way they do it is it goes from G1 through to G5. And yesterday, they were looking at the what had come off the sun. So the, the sun goes through these cycles where every 11 years it gets kind of grumpy and burps out all this plasma into space. And you can tell it looks grumpy because it's got these sunspots all over it. If you wait five and a half years, it's got like no sunspots. It's very clear. There's not a lot of activity. But then five and a half years later, it gets all crazy again. So every 11 years, the sun does this kind of thing. And it's been brewing and there have been these big sunspots and these big like patches of sunspots that are like 16 times bigger than our planet just on the surface of the sun and these things have been burping out and so yesterday noah could see these waves of plasma coming off the sun and did the calculations and said look like five somewhere between five and seven of these are going to hit the earth at the same time and this could be a g4 this could be really big and so everybody was excited for a g4 and but you can't always predict with these things what is going to happen and it turned out to exceed expectations it was a g5 it was not just severe it was extreme and so as i said this hasn't happened since 2003 and uh the fact that you can see the northern lights in vancouver it tells the whole story i mean vancouver is not north that is basically on the southern border of canada you shouldn't be able to see northern lights there and the fact that you could really speaks to what a spectacular event this was and i've talked to friends in alberta and saskatchewan who say that it was just a breath to behold just uh, just a beautiful sight Mm, gorgeous. Yes, uh, these images right now, uh, just looking at them. Uh, now, there were some concerns about this, Dan, that uh, GPS and satellite could be affected. And uh, Starlink apparently has experienced some disruption to its service. Is that a concern? Do you uh, expect more of this to happen? Yeah, I mean, if that, that is a concern. We are more reliant on the technology and satellite technology and digital infrastructure than we've ever been in our history. Certain, you know, if you think about these 11 year cycles, if you go back 11 years, we were nowhere near where we are right now. Uh, you know, we're moving at these great speeds. So we are more sort of precarious than we've ever been in terms of relying on that technology. But you know, they build that stuff with these storms in mind and they're pretty resilient. And, you know, these things will come and go as, as space weather does. And so I'm not losing any sleep over the infrastructure and what might happen. I can tell you in 2003, when there was uh, when there were when there was a G5, they lost power in South Africa and Sweden had some problems. So it's it's to be expected. But the other thing to think about is the fact that we don't get those kinds of problems for the most part here on Earth because we're mostly protected by our magnetic field. One of the things about this is that the sun is giving off plasma that would wipe our, like it would kill us like that. I mean, this is dangerous stuff. And if we lived on a planet that didn't have a magnetic field where our compass did not point north, we would be killed by this stuff. And, and it's, it's thought that the reason Mars doesn't have a nice, happy atmosphere is that it used to have an atmosphere and then space weather blew it all off because it wasn't protected by a magnetic field. And so the fact that we have a magnetic field is what protects us. And so as you see those particles zapping around and, and, and getting sort of absorbed by our atmosphere and moving towards the North Pole and the South Pole to make the auroras, that's our planet protecting us from stuff that would kill us otherwise. And so there is sort of a very dramatic sort of sci-fi feel to it that, wow, you know, this is not, it's not just harmless light show. It is a harmless light show, but only because we have a magnetic field on our planet that protects us. Dan, we are out of time, but just very, very quickly, can we expect to see more of this happening? Yes, if you've got clear skies, tonight promises to be as good. But like any kind of weather, space weather or Earth weather, you just can't predict. So it might not be as good as last night. It might be even better. Go outside and find out if you've got a clear night. <laughs> Dan Riskin, CDB Science and Technology Expert, thanks for being here as always.